it's Shirley and Sir Winston here. We're getting ready to take the picture off the window because today the neighborhood scavenger hunt is shifting from I to J. But Sir Winston thought you might want to have a look at the picture and a little bit of the story behind it. So for I, we did an igloo and an inukshuk. Sir Winston hasn't really seen one before, so we were having a little chat. And both of these symbols really remind us of the far north in Canada. Igloos were used by the Innu as uh, places to live. And the Inushuk was used by the Innu and other northern people as a way to mark something. So they're not 100% sure, but it could have been a way of saying we're here. Here's a landmark along the route. Here's where you may find a food cache. Here might be have an important spiritual symbol. Now these have gone beyond the north and you may see them around places in Nova Scotia as people uh, make them along the road. And you know, in biblical times, people also made statues or celebrated things by putting rocks together and naming a place a specific thing. And we may be able to tell you a Bible story about one of those. But for right now, Sir Winston and I are cleaning off the window. As you can see, we got the window painted. We have with John and Jesus in the River Jordan. Now, the Old Testament is full of stories about people who built uh, stone altars or gathered stones together as a way either to honor God or remind people of what God did, uh, memorials over people that died or reminder of covenant or promises made. So Sir Winston and I thought we'd tell you a story about one of those and it involves the River Jordan. Now, as you may remember, the Israelis, the Israelites rather, had left, as you may remember, the Israelites had left Egypt under the leadership of Moses. They were slaves and he was bringing them to the promised land. Well, for 40 years, they wandered in the desert and Moses died and Joshua became their leader and they were so close to the promised land, they could see it, but there was one thing that stood in their way, the River Jordan. Now, in a lot of cases, the River Jordan is not very deep, and you might be able in some places to wade across it, but this wasn't the case now. It was in full flood, and if people had tried to cross it, they would be drowned. But God had a plan and he told Joshua and Joshua told his people what they would do. He had them pack up their camps and they were to follow the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Now the Ark of the Covenant was kind of like a big, box, a very special one, because inside it had the tablets that had the Ten Commandments on them, and it had Aaron's staff, and it had a container of manna. And it had it rods on the outside so that it could be carried by the priests, but it was even more special than that because it was a symbol of the presence of God. It was said that God kind of spirit resided on the mercy seat, which was part of the top of this box. So the priest had put the rods on their shoulders to carry the Ark of the Covenant forward. And when they came to the edge of the water, as soon as they had put their feet in the water, the water stopped. In fact, it backed up in a great big wall at a town nearly a fool's day walk away. So the priests moved out to the middle of the River Jordan and the whole riverbed across became dry. 
And Joshua had the people, after they had picked one representative from each of the tribes, start crossing the river. Now what he had each one of those representatives do was to pick a stone from the bottom of the riverbed near where the priests were standing and they were to carry their stones to the other side. So once the stones were the other side and all the people had crossed the river, then Joshua had the priests that were carrying the Ark of the Covenant cross the river and as soon as they were all on the other side, the river started to flow again. So Joshua had those 12 stones put up at a place called Gilgal. And he told the Israelites, when you were asked, why are those stones there? They are a reminder that you had crossed the River Jordan on dry ground, that God was so powerful that your feet didn't touch the water. And since God is so powerful, you should have respect and awe for him all your life. And so that was a, a story from the Bible that they use rocks in a way perhaps like the Inushuk was used. And that story in a way is a reminder for us that during these times of trouble that God is here amongst us, that he is part of our lives and we can ask him for help. So why don't we have a little prayer together? Shall you bow your heads and repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for being here. Help us as we deal with COVID. Thank you for the people who look after us Help us to be kind to others and look after your world. Amen. And we'll see you next time at Kids Corner.